Hey guys, this is Chubbs, back again with some more tutorials. Um, as many of you know, probably by now, Doom Builder 2 is now out. My videos cover Doom Builder 1, so all you have to do is go to doombuilder.com. You'll see that they have a new site layout now than what they used to, and basically Doom Builder 2 is a much better version of the first Doom Builder. It's mostly the same, but the improvements just make it a lot easier to use and uh, it's a lot easier to not only to to create maps that work but maps that look good also and I'll explain that here in a second but just go there uh, go to downloads and right there is your setup installation file just click that and you can just download it and install it it's really nothing to it so once you install it and you start it up you'll be met with a screen that looks like this it has the doom builder logo there in the center and uh, what you'll first want to do it may actually introduce you to this screen when you first in install it and open it but go up to tools then game configurations this is like the uh, tools configuration screen on the first doom builder and you have you have your list of games here so like if you want to make maps for the first doom just click doom and uh, on the resources tab click add resource and you'll see here that it says from what from what file and it'll say what file resource so just click the little folder icon here browse and find the doom.wad file and just select it and then click OK then once you do that it'll add it in here like mine is so you can do that for doom you can go to doom 2 do the same thing for it and so forth what you can also do is on the different games you can click the testing tab and you can for the application like if you use ZDoom for example you can click the folder icon and you can find ZDoom.exe so that what this does is when you create a map when you go to test it you can click the test button and it will automatically know to start up ZDoom for example and the cool thing is you can select the skill, we skill level that it begins at uh, and you can put custom parameters in for when you're testing but I'm just gonna uncheck that that's optional uh, you can also select your textures these are texture sets what what this does is it actually categorizes the textures so um, like if you have different textures you can create a category for certain textures and those sorts of things you'll see what that does in a second but once you've configured your wad files and everything go ahead and click OK and uh, to, to begin a first map all you got to do is just go up here click the new map button or alternatively you can go to file then new map the cool thing about this is you don't have to actually type in the level name if you're going to create the first level for example for game configuration I'll select this and then click doom it automatically fills it in with E1M1 so you no longer have to type that in yourself if I go to doom 2 well it doesn't do it there but uh, if you go back to new map go down to doom 2 map 01's entered in so that's pretty cool I like that they added that in you can still of course type in your own map I can change it to uh, map 10 map 15 you can still change that but it prefills it so it eliminates a step for you once you do this uh, of course it shows the wad file you're going to be using here you can click OK and you're met with the familiar screen the grid that you use so right here is where it begins to become familiar there aren't a lot of changes to the way you make maps you know you still have the shortcut keys for vector mo vertices mode it's V for line mode it's L for sector mode it's S so you still have the same stuff I'm gonna go into line mode and show you guys something um, let's create just a square sector um, still looks the same once you create it you'll notice that it actually shows you the uh, floor and ceiling it actually shows it right here so and it even controls the brightness for example let's say I make a sector inside this one it's a weird looking sector there uh, I'm gonna give it a completely different uh, let's say see how it categorizes the textures here you have base brick computer doors flesh hell lights even steps switches all this good stuff so I'm just gonna select one here see what that did 
you can actually see the different textures. My floor texture here is a, a sort of a brick looking one. So you can actually see that. You don't have to highlight sectors just to see what they have. And when I go in and change the brightness of this sector, the cool thing is, let's say I bring it down to a low value like 50. Now look, it's pretty much dark. Or you can even change it to 100. And see, you can see the texture, but it's noticeably darker. That's another cool thing. You don't have to highlight over sectors any longer to see how bright they can be or how bright they are. Um, adding in things is still the same. You still select your stuff over here. Use this to control the direction that they face. And they have a sort of a green looking, that's for the player start, but they have an arrow looking button that looks pretty cool. And that, that also shows you how large the object is. Used to, you had to put your mouse over it to see how big the square boundary was, but now you can put it over and notice the demon, see how its button's bigger than the player start. The button determines how big the object is, and you can use that to see if it's going to be stuck in a wall, or like right now it'll be stuck inside this sector, but if I move it out, it's just in this sector. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it's cool, though, how you can go here and go to the textures, and I like the way it's categorized. That's probably one of my favorite features in this. Or you can go to the old-fashioned, you can click Doom 2 or All, and it basically shows a big old list of textures like it used to. But I like being able to categorize it because it, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going for a certain theme, you don't have to worry about straying from that theme if you just select the textures within a certain category. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just a lot easier to make maps that look good and that are consistent by using this method. But that's pretty much it uh, for the regular mode, and you can still go into the 3D mode. It's now called, uh, let's see if I can find it here, right here it's the 3D looking cube. It's now called visual mode. When you click that, it'll go right into it. And I apologize, I know it's jumping all over the place, but it's the recording program that I use. One neat thing is when you highlight walls now, or floors, it actually glows, so you'll know what you're highlighting. And it's it works different than what it used to. Here's the sector I made that's darker. But uh, you can still raise stuff by using the mouse wheel. If you hold down control and use the mouse wheel, you can still change the brightness. Like right now, it's real bright. You can lower it down. Right now, it's dark again, very dark. But you can select multiple walls now and change multiple textures at one time. Like if you click this wall, it's now red, which shows that it's selected. I can click this one. Now that's red. And I'm going to select all four walls. So n notice they're all glowing red. And if you right click now, you can click side defs and you can go in and this will actually change all of them. Then to deselect those, you can press C which stands for clear, and they're unselected. Uh, you can also, once you have them all selected like this, you can uh, hold down control and right click, and it'll automatically take you to the textures without having to click the side defs tab. So, it's, there's a lot of cool things in this. I have a